Hi folks, uh, I'm here again from High End Cheap Tech. Tonight we're doing a total screenshot video. I'm just going to talk about uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm thinking of getting one of these things. This is a silicon power uh, 3D NAND drive. It's probably a little bit older tech. But I'm not going to have this same Zotac CI-323 forever, but I would like to be able to dual boot it to Linux and to Windows. So I can edit files in either or and just go back to enjoying Linux a little bit. So tonight we're going to uh, uh, go ahead we're going to fire up good old-fashioned VMware. Now, I'm not going to show you this whole damn procedure. But this, basically, I, what I did today was download uh, a uh, ISO of the 64-bit version of TASA. Let me see if we can find it here. There it is. My expense. Boom. I'm going to hit open. We're ready. Could not detect which operating system. That's okay. Well, we're just going to tell it Debian for now. It's our best bet. Uh, and we'll go with Debian. Hmm. It's always a good choice. It could be Ubuntu. It's kind of based on both, but Ubuntu is based on Debian. So we're going to say, OK. And we're just going to call it. Uh, now we're going to call it Linux. Mint. And it's going to go on our virtual machines. It works for me. Right. We're going to store the virtual disk as a single file. We're going to make it, I don't know. I'm going to push it a little and get 22 gig in here. Now, obviously, I don't know. You know, if I split it, I'd have like 250 gig. But we're just using this for testing. So let's see if that'll fit. All right. We're going to do a little customized hardware memory. Oh, uh, we're going to tweak ourselves up to right around. Right around 3 gig here. 2904, good enough. Alright, processors. Well, we know we got a quad core, so let's go for And we're going to just leave that to automatic. This tells us where the CD is. Network adapter set to NAT, which is fine. Uh, sound card auto detect. Uh, what we got here? Uh, printer, we don't care. And uh, 3D graphics. Use setting. For monitor. Okay, we're set. Uh -huh. Okay, we can close that. We are set. Go okay, ahead and finish. And uh, we're pretty much done here. I'm going to go ahead and play the virtual machine, which means it's going to come up inside of the M. Um, now I'm going to have to set a bunch of stuff. So for now, we're just going to. Stop recording, and I'll get back to you once I've set everything up. So as you can see in the left side of this recording here, 
Uh, we're now downloading some language packs. Uh, this is a basic install, folks. You, you know, you pick your time zone, you pick where you're at, uh, and then you just follow the on-screen instructions. Uh, it's already it's already seen, obviously, my Wi-Fi connect. Otherwise, it wouldn't be downloading. It's using because it's a virtual machine. It's just using network address translation NAT to do this, and it's installing LibreOffice and a bunch of other apps. And I'll have to update those. Uh, I'll get back to you with more so as not to bore you to death. So right now we're installing the most important piece of software on here, OpenShot, which I will use to edit videos. And Linux. It'll be fun and educational. Um, the entire install went well. Everything works great, by the way. Fantastic. And so I'm back, folks. Uh, here we are uh, installing Chromium into the uh, virtual machine. Already installed OpenShot. It took a long time. The first repository was horseshit. It was telling me it was going to take 867 megabytes, almost a gig. To install a program, it should be about 75 meg, something like that. Uh, and then I went to a, another different package that was available. And bing, bang, boom. I've got at least version 2.4-1. Not the newest, but close enough. I know there's an update available. I don't have time for that crap tonight. We're just doing what we're doing. So we'll get Chromium on here, which is basically Chrome, the real version of Chrome. And we'll go from there. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Let's get back to it. Okay, bottom line here, we're going to go back screen. There just isn't quite enough RAM to run this the way I set it up. Might have to push it over the 3 gig limit. Thereby robbing Windows of its limit. So we'll see. And I can't get Chromium to install for shit. Uh, but the bottom line is, it works. You got your start menu here. All your stuff's here. Internet, office, sound, video. Accessories. I don't know where I. There's my open shot right here. Which has been installed. It's an older version, which I'm kind of shocked they didn't have 2.4.4. But at least it's got the little plus button to add stuff up here. So, I'll be able to, you know, do some updates inside this thing. Uh, so, Linux is fairly easy to install. If you found this video helpful, or uh, otherwise, check the description below. Give us a thumbs up. Say, whoa, that was cool. If not, well... Oh well, I just what it was. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this down. I should have done that. Well, you know what? Let's do it while we're in it, just to show you how easy it is. Inside the virtual machine, we're gonna go up here, and uh, we're gonna hit the power button, just like you would in Windows. We're gonna hit shut down, and this is actually gonna kill the entire virtual machine and. It should be gone in like now.
No more VM. Very cool. So thanks for watching the whole thing. I know it was a little disjointed. It, there's really not much to show you. All I can tell you is get yourself a copy of VM Player from VMware. Download the ISO for your favorite version of Linux or what you think might be your favorite version. And try installing it and see how it works out for you. That's all. Catch you in the next one.